And as I said to a group of people this morning, it's very, very difficult for me as an African American to know that on February 1st, 1960, four students from North Carolina A&T sat down at a lunch counter and demanded to be served. And here we are in 2009, about to be 2010, we can have four students go sit down at a lunch counter where they are welcome, but they can't read the menu. And my question is, how in the world did we get it? How, how could this be? How, how could it be that 55 years after Brown won, we are talking about an achievement gap in this country? How can that be? I mean, how, how can it be that our Latino students, I don't know how many years, it's been a long time since that case, Serrano case, I can't remember that case, that was dealing with the whole issue of English as a second language. How, how can it be that in a country as great as ours, that we can understand that 17-year-old black and Latino young people are doing math and reading at the same level as 13-year-old white children in this country. How can this be? And you go, you go to all of these conferences and people are talk, 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 talk. And what I've concluded is that some of us, let me put it this way, the one thing I've learned over all of these years is that many people support change as long as nothing changes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, 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 and we go to these conferences and we discuss change. And we make the mistake of thinking that the discussion constituted the change. And so then we go back home and we talk about what great speeches these were and then we sit out. And what I want to suggest to you is this question about educating our children isn't just a moral issue, which it is. It isn't just a social justice issue, which it is. It is really an issue that deals with how do you sustain a democracy? Because Kenneth Clark years ago said, you cannot have a democracy without an educated population. Because how can you expect people who are not educated to be able to make the kinds of decisions, the kind of informed decisions that you need to make in order to sustain a democracy? So if people are confused about why, why we got to address this, even if you don't accept the moral argument, you don't accept the social justice argument, you've got to understand the connection to democracy as a fundamental argument.